Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. This is Don Wilson, friends. Of all the reasons a person has for smoking, one stands at the very head of the list. That reason is enjoyment. Why, certainly, you smoke for enjoyment. And what gives you enjoyment? Why, it's the taste of the cigarette. Yes, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better for two reasons that have really made cigarette history. First, they're made of fine tobacco. L.S., M.F.T., Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco. Then, Lucky's are made better. Made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly. Yes, indeed. Made with fine tobacco, made better. Those are your reasons for always asking for Lucky's. Those are the things that make Lucky's taste better. So, be happy. Go Lucky. Next time you're shopping, ask for a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go Lucky, get better taste today. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Benny and his cast are returning from their trip to New York. At the moment, they're in Mary's compartment aboard the Super Chief, playing 20 questions. Now, let's see, Mary. We've used up 16 questions, and we found that you're thinking of something that's animal. He's very famous in show business and is over six feet tall. That's right. Oh, I know. Jimmy Stewart. No. Gary Cooper. Yep. <laughs> well... We guessed that one. Now, let's see. It's your turn, Dennis. Okay. I got a good one. Is it animal, mineral, or vegetable? It's animal, I think. <laughs> you think? Yeah. Is a bird considered an animal? Certainly. Hey, Mary. Mary, this silly kid just gave himself away. Watch this. Uh, tell me, Dennis. Is it a bird? Uh-huh. You see, Mary? You see? Yeah. Dennis, is this bird extinct? No. Is, um, is this bird found in America? Yes. A sparrow? No. A robin? No. Wait a minute, Dennis. Is this a very large bird? Uh-huh. An eagle? No. <laughs> a buzzard? No. Look, Dennis... Uh, wait a minute, Don. Bird... Wait a minute, Don. Hold it, hold it. I think I've got it. Dennis... Does this bird go to Capistrano quite frequently? Yes, yes. It's a swallow. No. <laughs> no? No. Does everybody give up? I do. Oh, I give up. Me too. What is it? Well, it's a pigeon. <laughs> Walt, Walter Pigeon? Dennis, how can you say he's a bird? I read in the paper where he just flew to New York. <laughs> All right, Dennis, you, you thought he was a bird because his name is Pigeon and he just flew to New York. But how can you say that he frequently goes to Capistrano? His mother lives there. <laughs> Dennis, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. Jack, it's your turn now. I know, and I've got a good one. You'll never guess this one. Go ahead, all you smart guys. Start guessing. Okay, Jack. Is it animal, mineral, or vegetable? Animal. Is it alive? Yeah. A human being? Yes. Has it got a mustache? Yeah. Bald? Bald? Yeah. I got it. No, it couldn't be. Wait, who are you thinking of? 
My girl, but you don't know her. <laughs> oh, fine. Now, come on. Come on, kids. Put on your thinking cap. Well, uh, let's see. He's a man with a mustache. Is he in show business? Yes. Does he make pictures? Yeah. One of his pictures currently showing? Uh-huh. I know. He's Herman Quigley, the assistant cameraman on the Humphrey Bogart's new picture, Beat the Devil. Gee, that's right. But how in the world did you ever guess Herman Quigley? It was obvious. What do you mean, obvious? Yeah, just before you went to New York, you ran into him at the Brown Derby. He'd forgotten his wallet. You loaned him a dollar and a half, and he's been on your mind ever since. <laughs> Yeah. Gee, I hope he pays me back the money. Look, his watch doesn't even keep good time. <laughs> it's your turn, Don. Oh, you better skip me for a few minutes. I want to go back to my compartment and see if the porter took all the dishes out. Don, why is it whenever we're on a train, you never eat in the diner? You always have your meals served in your compartment. My wife makes me do that. Why? She doesn't want people to see what a pig I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, hurry back, Don, so we can continue with the game Okay Hey, kids Kids, I'm glad Don's gone I've got a trick I want to play on him Yeah, yeah, what is it, what is it? Well, you know Don He's always thinking about lucky strikes So when we play the game again and it's his turn He's sure to pick luckies And we'll make believe we can't guess it What makes you so sure he'll pick lucky strikes? Because he never thinks of anything else in fact, when he went on his honeymoon, he registered at the hotel as Don Wilson and Cigarette. <laughs> so remember, when he comes back, we'll trick him. Gee, Mr. Benny, do you think that's much fun? You mean tricking Don? No, going on a honeymoon with a cigarette. <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> oh, keep quiet. Hey, that's him. Now, don't forget, kids. Come in. Oh, it's Bob Crosby. Hiya, Jack. Hello, Denny. Hello, Mary. Say, Bob, where have you been keeping yourself? Oh, I've been the, uh, in the lounge with Bagby, Fletcher, and some of the other boys in the band. We're playing a game called uh, Two Questions. No, no, Bob, you mean 20 questions. No, two questions, ginger ale or straight. <laughs> well, that I should have known. I haven't seen Bagby since he fell off at Kansas City. <laughs> Coming or going? <laughs> oh, he fell off going, too? Well, at least Bagby got back on. Remley missed the train entirely in Chicago. Well, you can blame that on Jack's program. Blame it on my program? Yeah, they keep singing Be Happy Go Lucky and Remley overdoes it. <laughs> well, look, Bob, whether he overdoes it or not, as soon as we arrive in Los Angeles, we're going right to the studio for rehearsal. And if he isn't there, I'm going to dock him two weeks' salary. Oh, you can't scare Rem with that kind of stuff. You know, he comes from a very wealthy family. Remley? I didn't know that. Why, certainly. His father made a fortune growing sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes? He's got the biggest yam plantation in Texas. Ooh, what he said. <laughs> he said yam. Oh. <laughs> Say, Jack, I've been, uh, I've been meaning to ask you, why have you got that black band on your arm? Well, tomorrow is March 15th, you know. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I better get back and check on the fellas. Uh, I'll see you all later. All right, so long, Bob. Now, Dennis, while we're waiting for Don, how about letting us hear the song you're going to do on next Sunday's show? All right, but I'd like to dedicate the song to my girl. Your girl? Okay. What's the name of the song? How You Fix for Blades. <laughs> And just do your song. Okay. An Irishman, an Irishman will steal your heart away. He'll be devil you and beguile you with his hullabaloo belay. When that rogue turns on the brogue, your heart will go astray. Oh, an Irishman, an Irishman will steal your heart away. 
An Englishman has manners. An Englishman has charm. They say it's truly difficult to ruffle his plum. He'll hold you and he'll kiss you, but wherever he may be. At four o'clock, he'll have to stop to sip a cup of tea. But an Irishman, an Irishman will steal your heart away. He'll be devil you and beguile you with his hullabaloo belay. When that rogue turns on the brogue, your heart will go astray. Oh, an Irishman, an Irishman will steal your heart away. Italian men are fiery. Italian men are warm. And when they love, they love with all the fury of a storm. But you can turn the flame to ice and make them run for life. For all you got to do is eat a spaghetti with a knife. But an Irishman, an Irishman will steal your heart away. He'll be devil you and beguile you with his hullabaloo belay. When that rogue turns on the brogue, your heart will go astray. Oh, an Irishman, an Irishman will steal your heart away. A Frenchman is romantic. And the French have savoir-faire. When he makes love to you, it's always très, très debonair. <laughs> He'll say to you, toujours l'amour, my life on you depends. But next day he'll be making love to two of your best friends. <laughs> but an Irishman, an Irishman will steal your heart away. He'll be devil you and beguile you with his hullabaloo belay. When that rogue turns on the brogue, your heart will go astray. Oh, an Irishman, an Irishman will steal your heart away. The German man is steady. The German man is smart. For oh, he'll come around and around again to win the Fraulein's heart. <laughs> but you can lose him easily and make him hide his face. When he comes around to see you, tell him, this is not the place! <laughs> but an Irishman, an Irishman will steal your heart away. He'll be devil you and beguile you with his hullabaloo belay. When that rogue turns on the brogue, your heart will go astray. Oh, an Irishman, an Irishman will steal your heart was very, very good, Dennis. I know it'll be fine on the show Sunday. Oh, kids, that must be Don Wilson. Remember, remember the trick we're going to play on him. Oh, what is it again? Well, when it's his turn, you know, he's sure to give us Lucky Strike. So nobody guess it. Nobody guess that it's Lucky Strike. Come in. Hi, kids. You're still playing 20 questions? Yes, Don, and you're just in time. It's your turn. Oh, good. I've already got something on my mind, so start guessing. Okay. Get this, Mary. Don, is this thing you're thinking of nearly three inches long, about a half an inch thick, and white in color? Yes, yes. Is it round and firm and fully packed? Yes, yes. Oh, it's amazing the way you people are guessing it. Isn't it, though? <laughs> is it free and easy on the draw? Yes, yes. Now, come on, now. Come on, come on. You're getting warm. You're getting warm. An electric blanket. <laughs> No. Gee, I, I thought it was an electric blanket, too. Didn't you, Mary? Yeah. <laughs> well, look, Don, is this thing you're thinking about associated with the letters L-S-M-F-T? Yes, 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 that's it, yes. Now, let's see. Gee, this is too hard. I give up. I do, too. <laughs> Me, too. Oh, for heaven's sakes, kids, how can you possibly give up when you're so close? Why, when you guessed it was almost three inches long, white in color, I was sure you knew what it was. Well, we don't, Don, do we, Mary? Come on, tell us, what is it? Oh, all right. It's a piece of chalk. <laughs> Uh, a piece of chalk? Don Wilson, you were thinking of a lucky strike and you know it. No, I wasn't, Jack. Now, wait a minute. I'll admit that chalk is white and can be three inches long. 
I'll also admit that it's round and firm and fully packed. But how in the name of Dorothy Collins are the letters LSMFT associated with a piece of chalk? But they are, Jack. LSMFT stands for Leibowitz, Sanders, McIntyre, Finley, and Teitelbaum. The biggest chalk manufacturers in the world. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> You're not mad, are you, Jack? <laughs> no, no, Don. No, I'm not mad. In fact, I've, I've got to give you credit. You've got a lot of brains. But then it takes a lot to fill that big, fat head of yours. <laughs> Chalk maker. Oh, come on. Let's get on with the game. Whose turn is it now? Nobody's. I'm not playing anymore. I'm going to the club car and read for a while. See you later. Hmm. Largest chalk manufacturers in the world. Don just made that up. Leibowitz, Sanders, McIntyre, Finley, and Teitelbaum. That's almost as far-fetched as Batten, Barton, Durston, and little old Osborne. <laughs> Oh, well. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky. Lucky strike today. <laughs> hey, we'll be in Albuquerque soon. Gee, that'll be a $126 worth of my ticket used up. <laughs> Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go... Gee, I didn't think the club car was so... Whoops. Oh, oh, pardon me, lady. Why, certainly. Say, aren't you Jack Benny, aren't you? Yes, yes, I, I am, I am. Mr. Benny, would you mind autographing this magazine for my granddaughter? Your granddaughter? I'll be glad to. There you are. Are you going to Los Angeles? Yes, I'm going to visit my son in Beverly Hills. Perhaps you know him. He's a competitor of yours. Oh, is he a comedian? No, he owns a laundry. <laughs> oh. He's an awfully good boy. He's having me come all the way out from Chicago just to celebrate my birthday. That's tomorrow. Oh, how nice. <laughs> Happy birthday. How old, how old will you be? Thirty-nine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're teasing me, huh? Yes, I am. I'm really seventy-two. Well, then why, why do you tell people you're thirty-nine? It gets laughs. <laughs> Oh, oh, I see. Well, goodbye, and thanks for the autograph. You're welcome. Goodbye. Uh, that's my fountain pen. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. Here you are. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Gee, for an old lady, she's got eyes like a hawk. <laughs> Be happy, go lucky, be happy. Lucky strike today. Yeah, California's sure a nice place to live, Sam. Oh, oh, there's Rochester. He's in there talking to the porter. I'm going to stay here and listen to this. Uh, how long have you been working for Mr. Benny Rochester? Twelve years, six months, and fourteen weeks. Well, how come you know the time so exactly? My friend... When you're in Mr. Benny's employ, you don't get money, you get service stripes. <laughs> well, Rochester, if he ain't paying you much, why don't you leave him? Oh, I'd never leave Mr. Benny. He may have his faults, but deep down inside, he's the kindest man I know. Really? Yeah, I'll never forget the time I had pneumonia. I was so sick. For a full week, I had 105 fever. And all that time, Mr. Benny stayed right with me. Fed me and nursed me. No kidding. And then at two o'clock one morning, I passed the crisis. My fever broke and my temperature went down to normal. Mr. Benny looked at me, smiled and said, Rochester, you're going to be all right. 
Then he yanked me out of bed and shoved a broom in my hand. <laughs> you know, Rochester, this isn't the first time Mr. Benny's been on one of my cars. I've made the trip with him cross-country several times. Man, it's murder. <laughs> I know. Oh, I don't mind the fact that he don't tip much, but whenever he's aboard, the train's always 15 or 20 minutes late. Now, a couple of years ago, he insisted that the train make an unscheduled stop at Newton, Kansas. Then once he made a stop for a half an hour at Gallup, New Mexico. Once he set the super chief back a whole hour when he got off at Trinidad, Colorado. And this trip, I heard him tell the conductor to make another unscheduled stop. At Flagstaff, Arizona. Yeah, yeah. Has he got relatives in all those places? No, bank accounts. <laughs> He wouldn't discuss my private affairs. <laughs> Rochester, I can't understand why Mr. Benny keeps saving his money like that. He's not married. He's got no family, no children. Who's he going to leave it to? What makes you think he's going to leave it? <laughs> <laughs> Rochester. Huh? Oh, oh, hello, boy. Oh, 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 yes. Rochester, I heard what you were saying. And if you don't behave yourself, you're not going to get that new gold stripe this year. <laughs> now, I'll be up in the club car in case you want to see me. Yes, sir. She had a good time in New York. Looked up all my old friends, ate in those wonderful restaurants. My sponsor was so nice to me. I spent over 20 minutes in his office. He let me sit down this time. <laughs> He's a nice guy. And be happy, go lucky, be happy. Lucky strike today. Oh, look at that cute little boy. Hello, little boy. Hello, mister. What's your name? My name is... Say, aren't you Jack Benny? Why, yes, yes, I am. I recognized you from your television show. Really? Uh-huh. I saw that one with Liberace, and it was great when you played your violin. Thanks very much. Thanks? I mean, you're thanking me for playing the violin? Yeah, the next day my mother let me stop taking lessons. <laughs> hmm. Well, goodbye, little boy. Goodbye, Mr. Benny, and thanks again. You're welcome, you're welcome. <laughs> Gee, the club car's crowded. Oh, there's a vacant seat next to that man over there. Excuse me, mister, do you mind if I sit here? No, 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 not at all. Glad to have company. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's a late newspaper, I think... Uh... Sure is exciting out on the road. I'm traveling for Watson's Woolen Underwear. Watson's Woolen Underwear? Oh, sure, you must have heard of us. We advertise on the radio. Really? Mm, Watson's Woolens fit you snug, keep you warm as a bug in a rug. One flat button instead of two. Watson's Woolens are the buy for you. <laughs> oh, yes, I... I know that program. It features Spade Cooley and his itchy seven. <laughs> How's business? Not so good. Was even bad in Chicago last week. Chicago's always been a great underwear town. Windy city, you know. <laughs> I know what you mean. Oh, are you in underwear, too? Not today. It's a little warm. <laughs> Have you been in the underwear business very long, Mr. Mr. In March. Oh, Mr. March, have you been in the underwear business very long? No, no, just a few months. I used to travel for the firm of Leibowitz, Sanders, McIntyre, Finley, and Teitelbaum. <laughs> oh, yes, the chalk manufacturer. Hey, you've been around. Oh, I've traveled quite a bit. Well, so long, Mr. March. So long. Enjoy talking to you, and don't forget... Mm, Watson's Woolens fit you snug, keep you warm as a bug in a rug. I won't forget. One I flat won't... button instead of two. Watson's Woolens are the buy for you. Tickle, 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 tickle. tickle. 
Archie, what an eager beaver. <laughs> well, I think I'll go to bed. We arrive in Los Angeles so early. Yeah, no doubt about it. You sure have an interesting job, Sam. Hmm, Rochester's still talking to that porter. Yeah, you're right, Rochester. I've been across the continent over a hundred times. Gosh, you must know every inch of it. Yeah, and America's an amazing country. It has Harlem on the East Coast, Central Avenue on the West Coast, and all that waste in between. <laughs> Well, Sam, don't forget our date. The first Saturday night you're in Los Angeles, we'll go out with those two girlfriends of yours. Okay. First we'll have dinner, and then we'll take them to the Hollywood Bowl. But, Rochester, this time of the year, there's nothing going on at the Hollywood Bowl. We'll change that. <laughs> oh, Rochester. Uh, oh, yes, boss. I'm going to bed. Make sure that my luggage is all ready when I get off tomorrow. I will. Good night, boss. Good night. Oh, uh, Mr. Benny. Yeah? Are you going to get off at Los Angeles or Pasadena? Pasadena. I always get a bigger reception there. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's a reminder from the National Highway Safety Council. When driving, remember that courtesy is contagious. The careful driver always considers the careless driver. The golden rule applies to driving, too. Drive as you would have the other fellow drive. And please remember, when you're in your car, be a wise driver, not a wise guy. Thank you. <laughs> Jack will be back in just a minute, but first... Do you remember the winner of last year's $25,000 Tam O'Shanter golf tournament, Lou Worsham? Here he is to get a word in wedge-wise. Hello, folks. The club that I have in my hand is a double-service wedge. You'll remember that I made one of the most lucrative shots that I have ever made with this club. During the Tam O'Shanter tournament, I used this club at the last hole. From 115 or 20 yards away, and made one of the luckiest shots my whole life. Other golfers might have chosen an eight or a nine iron to play this shot. To me, the wedge has been one of my favorites. On that day, that was a lucky choice. And when it comes to cigarettes, my choice, luckies. They taste better. Lou Worsham is right. Smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, luckies taste better. Because Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and Luckies are made better. So be happy, go Lucky. Ask for a carton of Lucky Strike. Luckies taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike. Well, Rochester, here we are home again. Yeah, four weeks is a long time. Believe me, I, I got sick and tired eating at those restaurants. It's good being home. I'm a little hungry. How about a nice home-cooked meal? Okay, boss, I'll do it right now. Good. What are you going to fix me? Well, I'll fix you some veal cutlets with sour cream. Mm -hmm. A side dish of asparagus with sour cream. Mm -hmm. A nice baked potato with chives and sour cream. Mm -hmm. And for dessert, strawberries and sour cream. <laughs> But, Roger, why does everything have to have sour cream? When we left, I forgot to stop the milk. <laughs> well, go ahead and fix it. Good night, folks. The Joint Penny Program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, Al Gordon, Hal Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. The Jack Benny Program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes.